Hey guys, it's Brian Storm. In this video, we're going to be comparing Legends cards so I can help you make the right decisions on buying the best possible Legends cards for you. We have all this data compiled, most of it from HutDB, but I ended up playing with some of the numbers just to create some of my own calculations. I also grabbed the cost of each Legend so we can get a feel for how good a card is compared to its price. There are a few things that we're not going to be looking at, such as the height and weight of a card through this spreadsheet. We're not really going to be looking at the position or the way that a player shoots, but just know that righties are usually more desirable than lefties. So the first thing I want to talk about is this BSF value that I came up with. It's probably the exact opposite of what you think it is. You know, if you think something is BS, you think someone's lying to you, or it's just unimportant... But in this case, the BSF is the Brian Storm factor, where I took all of the shooting stats, slap shot accuracy, power, wrist shot accuracy, power, and all the skating stats, acceleration, agility, and speed, and I averaged all of them out. Because I think those seven uh, stats are the most important stats of a player. Sure, maybe you can also throw in some weights there, like power maybe isn't as important as accuracy, but we'll just call this like a primitive version of the BSF. And also, the way that these players are sorted right now is from cheapest to most expensive. So looking at this, you see that Jeff Sanderson is number two. He's the second cheapest player yet he has a BSF of 91.6. On average, all of his shooting and skating stats are 91.6, which is significantly higher than pretty much everyone all the way up to Lanny McDonald, who goes for about 100K. So he is the best option to buy under 100K. From 100K to about 160K, where Danny Heatley and Scott Niedermeyer are, Lanny McDonald is the best player to buy because his BS factor is 92.3 where Danny Heatley and Niedermeyer are just a little bit higher and Sittler is tied with Lanny McDonald. Sittler goes for 140k depending on the day I guess. After that the most expensive players around 200k plus are all around the same mark. You have Chris Pronger who goes for uh, 200 like 20 ish k has the lowest BS factor of 90.3, which makes me believe that he should be going down in price. He's not worth that amount. To the right, I averaged out all of these different stats. I mean, maybe we don't really care, like the average of all the balance stats, but for some like shooting stats or skating stats, It'll be important when I break down each legend one by one because I'm going to be comparing it to these averages. I have an average total here, but if you uh, notice, if I go back, the legends cards range from 90 overall to 93 overall. So maybe it's a little bit unfair if we're comparing Jeff Sanderson to Mike Bossy in 93 overall. So we also have an average of the... Um, cards by a particular overall. So let's sort these cards from best to worst in a lot of these major uh, attributes. You have this A overall value, which is uh, which was made from the HUD DB guys. It's called adjusted overall, where it also does something similar to the BS factor, but it uses more stats. It tries to tell you whether or not a person plays below or above their overall. So in this case, Randy Carlisle, his uh, adjusted overall is 89.8, but his actual overall is 90, which means he plays a little bit below his card. So if we sort these cards by adjusted overall from greatest to least, Chris Pronger would be the best card, even though I just told you that he has the worst BS factor out of all of the cards. That's just because uh, a lot of his uh, intangible stats, I mean, I guess you could call them intangible stats, such as poise, strength, shot blocking, other stuff like that, is a lot higher, significantly higher, compared to some of these smaller guys like Burray or St. Louis. But again, I don't think this makes him a better player. On the other end, you have Ruchin all the way at the bottom with an 89.3. I guess we can also compare this to their overalls if you really want to, but I'm not going to get deeper into that. So now let's sort them by slap shot accuracy, who's got the best slap shot. 
It's going to be Sackick, Boyle, and Sittler at 94s. But outside of Shanahan and Carlisle, they all have pretty decent slap shot accuracy. For wrist shot accuracy, same idea. Bossy with a 98 means he'll uh, shoot at the net 98% of the time. No, that's not what it means. Him, Robotai, and Sakic lead the way in wrist shot accuracy. Where towards the bottom, you have players like Lidstrom, Hatcher, Shanahan, Carlisle, and Boyle with the lowest wrist shot accuracy. Now let's look at acceleration for skating. Burray and Madano have the best acceleration where towards the bottom, you have Newmanen, Shanahan, and Pronger with 86 acceleration. Similarly with agility, again, Burray, Madano, a few more players. And then at the bottom, similar names, Shanahan, Carlisle, Ruchin. And finally, top speed. Again, Bure, Madano. Here you also have Niedermeyer. And your slowest players are going to be Numenin, Robitaille, and Carlisle. So from here, let's scroll down a little bit. I made this graph on the BS factor, the Brian Storm factor. Basically, the red line is the average Brian Storm factor. Everything above this line, these players have the best skating and shooting. Everything below they have the worst skating or shooting. You'll notice that everyone up to Recce, except for Lidstrom and Rolston, have average or above average BSF. So take that as you may. Down here, we're gonna compare a legend card to a base card based on their price. So Sittler and Crosby go for around the same price, 140,000. And important things to note, they're about the same size, Sittler has an extra two points in synergies, one in Thread the Needle and one in Rocket Skates, which could make him more desirable. Notice that Sittler has a way better shot than Crosby. Their skating is about the same, and Crosby has better defensive stats than Sittler, outside of any physical stats such as strength and blocking shots. I don't even know what SCH is. Is that scoring hat tricks? Crosby's better at scoring hat-tricks. There, I said it. Also, most important stat for a center is the face-offs, and Sittler is way better than Crosby there. Once you activate his rocket skates, his skating should be better than Crosby's as well, which is why I feel like you guys should go with Sittler instead of Crosby if you had that much coins. We're going to do a similar comparison with Ovechkin and Sanderson, but this one's going to be a little bit different. Ovechkin is a bigger player than Sanderson, but he's more expensive. Sanderson has more synergies possibly making him better now if we look at the graph the graph kind of goes a little bit all over the place adding in their size kind of makes it feel like they're about to have like a 1v1 boxing match or wrestling match or something but Ovi has Sanderson beat with his slap shot his balance offensive awareness and strength whereas Sanderson has him beat everywhere else his skating is significantly better than Ovi's as Ovi's speed is like around 87 and Sanderson's is closer to like 90 if you activate fine shooting for Ovechkin, he'll be an even better sniper, but with all the synergies on Jeff Sanderson, he'll be an even faster skater with a lethal shot as well. And remember, Sanderson's 40k cheaper, but he's also a lefty compared to Ovechkin's rightiness. Just some interesting comparisons I wanted to show you. Now let's talk about each legend one by one. Starting with Niedermeyer, very fast, great defensively, amazing passing. Three synergies, but two points in LL, which is an average synergy that you may not even activate. Ruchin a little on the slow side. All of his other stats are about average. He has great passing and a great face-off stat to take your face-offs. He has fine shooting and clutch player which will increase his wrist shot accuracy to 95 if you activate both those synergies and thread the needle will help with his speed. Numinant an even slower player but with a powerful shot and great endurance. Synergies aren't too great will help him with his passing with his slap shot power even more. Increasing awareness stats with locker room leadership. Bork I did a review of him earlier with my Your Ultimate Team series and he loves going out of position for some reason. He can be pretty fast with the rocket skates activated. He has a decent shot and apparently he has pretty good awareness which I didn't see. Overall I'd avoid him though. Hashik. Can't say much about how a goalie plays based on their attributes, but I heard the Dominator was uh, pretty bad in this game. On top of that, his synergies are bad. McDonald, outside of his synergies, looks really good. He has an amazing shot. His stash is amazing. I mean, his uh, puck handling's amazing, and he can skate pretty well. For the price tag, I'd get him. But again, the synergies are kind of eh. LL is average, whereas hitting target is pretty bad. Sakic looks pretty good. He has amazing handling stats and an amazing face-off stat, making him one of the 
the highest faceoff players in the game. He's fast, he has a good shot with the synergies, his wrist shot accuracy is at 99. His poise is really high and there's not anything negative that I can tell you about him. He's definitely one of the best legends to have this year. Sanderson, an amazing undervalued card. We already talked a lot about him. Fast with a good shot, good handling. His synergies will boost him even more in skating and handling. Madonna, another amazing legend card this year. Last year, I loved his card, and this year... I'm going to love it just as much. He's very fast, has a lethal wrister, and great at puck handling. Slap shot a little weaker than his wrist shot, and his face-off rating is only an 85. So if you have higher face-offers, use them and have Madonna on your wing. Shanahan, this card is very weird. He's very high in anything related to physical stats. Like a cannon when he shoots with his power, but he'll almost always miss the net with his slap shot. At least it won't go where he wants it to with a slap shot accuracy of 83. He's a little bit better with the wrist shot. He has amazing passing, puck control, as well as defensive awareness. And with 99 fighting, you should not lose a fight with him. But with that said, he's not a great skater, and his team synergy is terrible. For a 92 overall, his skating is kind of below average, and his shooting is even worse. But he is amazing everywhere else except on face-offs life pro tip don't have a measure center please but i think he costs too much because he's the exact opposite of the bs factor that i mentioned earlier he's low in that factor but if we took the opposite of that stat he'd be like a near perfect player team synergies are nice too two points and thread the needle and one in the average locker room leadership so curry's an interesting one because his flashback came out recently that's better than his legend card sending the price of this card down from like 150k to 90k this card is only better as a center with his face off stat and maybe some defensive stats too. On its own though, this card's a little slow but still has a great shot. Amazing deking and pretty good defensively. His synergies help with skating and shooting. Van Beesbrook, again, another goalie. Can't judge him by his stats except the fact that he is a midget. Not exactly, but he's definitely one of the smallest goalies in the game. And in the past, usually the bigger the goalie, the better that they were, which is why I would avoid him. Obatai has a godly wrister, and he has amazing puck handling skills. 86 speed is a little concerning though, as all of his synergies only increase his acceleration. He probably feels like a way better Corey Perry from last year. That's harder to strip the puck from, and for some reason has really good defensive awareness. Because come on, <laughs> Corey Perry doesn't play defense, you're crazy. Rolston, great skating, but a weak shot. Great puck handling, but his defensive and awareness stats are about average. His two player synergies will make him faster and have a more accurate wrist shot whereas his team synergy is a waste of space koivu has a great shot great passing great puck control great stick checking and awareness everything else is kind of average and he's a small player as well his synergies will further increase his puck handling skills and the team synergy will improve his skating for marty what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit you with a clip. A lot of people said he was a great goalie to have, so I decided to try him out in competitive seasons against the top player. And uh, this goes in. And now I'm going to tell you this is the third time it's happened in three games. Peter Mrazek let in like one goal like that in like 30 games. So, yeah. Avoid him. Synergies are all over the place too. A great team synergy in Thread the Needle, an average one in LL, and a bad one in CW. So Bossy's like Robitaille, except he's a way better skater. Lethal wrist shot, amazing puck handling, 97 endurance. Does Bossy ever get tired? I have no idea. But this is a crazy good card. Just not very physical, but about average size. Messier, this card was going for like 400k on release, and now he's going for around 100k. Pretty crazy. But he's a 92 overall with not so great stats. So for 100k, I guess it's better. All I'm saying is this card should not be going for 200k plus, which it's not, so I guess we're good there. Got below average skating, but a powerful shot and good puck handling. The place he really excels at, though, is the face-off dot with a face-off rating of 94. Those synergies are also really bad. Clutch player is decent for wrist shot accuracy, locker room leadership, good for awareness, but only if you activate it, and AA, no one, no one wants that. Oh, it's the effing all-star. A huge body that's pretty decent at skating, great shot, and great puck handling skills. Not very good defensively, though. Synergies further improve his skating, shooting, and puck handling. Recky, his stats aren't good for 92 overall. Overall, but considering his price at 100k, it's pretty decent. He looks good, or about average, everywhere on the ice, but those synergies could uh, be better. His puck handling skills are the best thing about him. Gonchar is very fast, and he's great defensively. His shooting could be a little bit better, but don't worry for fine shooting synergy will help him out with that. 
a little bit, just wrist shot accuracy actually. And then hitting target will also help him out with slap shot power. This guy's big and fast. He's great to have defensively, especially with those synergies. Boyle is slower, but has a great slap shot. It's also a little bit painful to stare at his synergies outside of rocket skates, which would make him decent at skating. He also looks like he knows what he's doing defensively, despite being an offensive defenseman. Pronger, oh God. He's a huge 93 overall player. Great for you defensively, as long as he doesn't have to skate very far. He has a very powerful shot, but those synergies aren't that great. Two points in AA, that's stuff to look at. Marty St. Louis looks like an amazing player and really the only thing that sets him back is his size. It didn't set him back in the NHL though, so hopefully it doesn't set you back on the ice. But yeah, his skating, shooting, and puck handling are all really good. Cujo was one of the worst goalies last year. Don't know how he is this year. Probably not gonna find out with those two team synergies that I don't like. Silky Smooth is nice though. Sittler, we compared to Crosby, found out he was a better choice for the price. But come on, do you want a 67 year old on the ice? Yes, you do. So just wait until Yager ages a little bit. He's great everywhere though, except defensively a little bit below average. Burray, another tiny player, but his speed and shooting will blow you away. Defensively, not that great either as his stick checking is 86 and his synergies make him even faster. Hatcher, let's start with his FF synergy, a synergy that doesn't come up very often and it's frequent fighter. It helps him with fighting. He might as well only have two synergies. He's a big body with a powerful shot and pretty decent defensively. His skating could be a bit better, but really it's just those synergies that hurt him greatly. Three really bad synergies. It's Carlisle, a little on the slow side, but has a powerful shot. Great at passing and puck control, but not too exciting defensively. Synergies aren't that special either. So there you have it, guys. That's my overview of the legends in NHL 18. Let me know what you guys think of these legends, and I'll see you next time.